Steps in preparing soluble salts of potassium, sodium, and ammonium. Now, in previous slides, we have learned that to prepare the salt of potassium, sodium, and ammonium, uh, the only reactions that we can use is the neutralizations between acid and alkali, and the technique that we are going to use is called the titrations. But the question is why? Why can't we use the other three reactions of acid to prepare the salt of sodium, potassium, and ammonium? So in this slide, I'm going to discuss with you why this is the only reactions that we can use to prepare the salt of potassium, sodium, and ammonium. And the methods that we are going to use is titration. Now let's see this example. Let's say we would like to prepare uh, potassium sulfate and then uh, this is a soluble salt and then it's a salt of potassium. So the only reactions that we can use is the neutralizations between potassium hydroxide, this is the alkali, and uh, sulfuric acid. Let's say when doing this uh, chemical reactions, we use excess sulfuric acid. Okay, so sulfuric acid is in excess. So excess means uh, we, we use it more than what it needed. So when we use excess, this is sulfuric acid, okay, after the reactions, and uh, let's say this is a product that we have. So inside this product, of course, we have uh, potassium sulfate, and uh, of course, we have water. Uh, we have water, okay. But uh, since we use excess sulfuric acid, then we have sulfuric acid inside this solution as well. Okay, then we have a problem. Why? Because what we need is just the salt of potassium sulfate. But now in the products, we have potassium sulfate and sulfuric acid. So how are we going to remove this sulfuric acid from this solution? That is the problem. So when we prepare the salt, we must consider this, okay? So what are the impurities uh, inside the products and how to remove the impurities from the products? And uh, the answer to this question is we can't. We are not able to remove sulfuric acid from this uh, potassium sulfate solutions because both of them are solution. It's very hard to remove or to separate a solution from another solution. Uh, means that means we cannot have excess sulfuric acid. Uh, if we have uh, excess potassium hydroxide, then we, we're going to have the same problems. Okay. If we have excess potassium hydroxide, okay, if we have this excess potassium hydroxides, then inside the products, uh, we have potassium hydroxide as the impurities. And it's very, very hard for us to remove this potassium hydroxide from this solutions. So that is the problems that we are going to face. And uh, since we don't have any methods to remove this uh, potassium hydroxide, therefore we cannot have excess potassium hydroxide as well. Means that in these reactions, we cannot have excess sulfuric acid and we cannot have excess potassium hydroxide. And to make sure that we don't have excess sulfuric acid and we don't have excess potassium hydroxide, the methods that we use in these reactions to control this is called the titrations. Okay, we use titration to make sure that there is no excess sulfuric acid and no excess uh, potassium hydroxide in our products. So uh, that is uh, the very, very important things that you need to keep in mind eh, when you decide which methods to use in uh, preparing salt. So just now we learned that to prepare the salt of potassium, sodium, and ammonium, uh, the only reactions that we can use is neutralizations between alkali and acid, and the methods that we can use is called the titration. Uh, now let's have a look at the steps in preparing the salt of potassium, sodium, and ammonium by using titrations. Okay, so just now we learned that um, at the end point, the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is completely reacted and there is no excess hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide in the solutions. But then we have a problem here. Why? Because 
we still have phenolphthalein in the products and that is some things that we don't want because this phenolphthalein is impurities in the products we don't want this phenolphthalein inside our salt so how do we remove this phenolphthalein from these solutions and the answer is we can't okay because phenolphthalein is a solution so it's very very hard for us to remove a solution from another solution okay so if we can't remove this phenolphthalein then what can we do to get a pure salt okay now we already have our pure salt solutions huh? then the next step is how to remove the water from the solution so that we can have a solid crystal salt to do this we proceed to step three crystallizations uh, during crystallizations we heat the solutions to remove the water and uh, we heat it until the solution becomes saturated so the solution is heated until it is saturated this is to remove water from the solutions now sometimes a student may ask why don't we just heat it until it dry then straight away we can get a salt um, we can't do this so you can't heat it until it dry because if you heat it until it dry the salt may be decomposed by heat so you can't heat it until it dry so you can only heat it until it is saturated now when it is saturated and as you leave it cool down then you will find that the salt will crystallize okay it will form crystals inside the solutions so the solution is left to cool or evaporate and then crystallize huh? so it will form the uh, crystallized salt now after the solid salt is formed uh, then we can proceed to step four filtrations and drying so uh, just now you can see that uh, after crystallizations there are still water yeah there is still water so we can separate uh, the salt the solid salt from water uh, through filtrations huh? so the remaining water is then removed through filtrations so after filtrations then we get our uh, solid salt okay so this salt is rinsed with a little distilled water okay to remove some unwanted dirt or impurities on the surface there is still some water inside the salt okay so then we press it with a piece of filter paper okay you press a filters papers on the salt to absorb the water then uh, you will get a dried salt in solid form so this is how do we prepare a soluble salt of potassium sodium and ammonium let's revise the steps again eh? okay so in step one okay we use the uh, phenolphthaleins to get the end point to see how much hydrochloric acid needed to fully react with sodium hydroxide and then in step two we repeat the reactions without using phenolphthalein or without using indicator because we don't want the indicators to contaminate the salt so the the phenolphthalein is the impurities huh? so we repeat the experiments without using indicators because we already know the end point huh? so we know uh, how much hydrochloric acid can fully react with 25 centimeter heaps of sodium hydroxide okay so after we get our pure salt solutions then uh, we heat it until it's saturated and we let it cool down to form the uh, solid salt uh, in crystal form uh, after that we use filtrations to remove the remaining water and then so we use the uh, filter papers to dry it uh, by pressing the filter papers on the salt and then we get our final products uh, a dried salt in solid form well um steps in preparing soluble salts of non-potassium sodium and ammonium well just now we learned that um, to prepare a salt which is not uh, potassium sodium ammonium then we can use the other three uh, chemical reactions of acid metal with acid metal carbonate with acid and metal oxide with acid and then some um, we can remove the excess reactants by using filtrations 
now I'm going to explain to you why why this one we can use filtration but then this one cannot this one we must use titration uh, but this one we can use filtration now this one we cannot use filtration is because the metals okay the metals the carbonate the oxide or the alkalis of potassium sodium and ammonium they are soluble in water so they are solutions okay they are solutions and the acid is also solutions both of the reactants are solutions eh? so therefore um, it's very hard for us to separate a solution from uh, another solution sir eh? but for the salt which is not potassium sodium and ammonium we don't have this problem because uh, the metals the carbonates and the oxide eh, to prepare the sort of uh, non-potassium sodium ammonium they are not solution they are insoluble in water and therefore they are solid eh? and we can remove solid easily from a solutions by using filtrations let me show you how we do this okay let's say we would like to prepare the sort of iron 2 sulfate okay so to prepare iron 2 sulfate uh, one of the reactions that we can use is uh, acid with oxide eh? of course you can use the uh, acid with iron metals or uh, or sulfuric acid with uh, iron 2 carbonates eh? it's, it's up to you but uh, uh, in this case I choose uh, iron 2 oxide eh? okay so because there are three reactions eh, for us to prepare the soluble salt which is not potassium sodium and ammonium eh? okay so in this case I choose uh, iron 2 oxide so iron 2 oxide to react with a uh, sulfuric acid to produce uh, iron 2 sulfate okay that is the salt that we want and uh, water now in this reaction uh, it's very very important sir, for you to know that you must use excess iron 2 oxide okay you cannot use excess uh, sulfuric acid eh? because if you use excess sulfuric acid then sulfuric acid uh, is exists in the products and it's very hard for us to remove sulfuric acid from the products uh, because this is a solution it's very hard for us to remove a solution from another solutions mm -hmm. uh, but if we what we use is iron 2 oxide uh, so after the reactions then you will find that we still have this uh, solid iron 2 oxide you need to know the iron 2 oxides is insoluble in water so therefore after the reaction if we have excess iron 2 oxide this iron 2 oxides will exist as solid in the solutions and then we can remove this solid easily by using filtrations so that is the difference between uh, preparing the sort of potassium sodium and ammonium and preparing the sort of non potassium sodium and ammonium okay for the salt which is non potassium sodium and ammonium the the oxide the carbonate or the metal that we use are insoluble they are solid so if we use them in excess so in the products they are still in ex, uh, they are still in solid because they are insoluble then we can remove them easily by using filtrations that is the major difference eh, between uh, preparing the sort of uh, potassium sodium ammonium and preparing the sort of non potassium sodium and ammonium okay now let's see the steps eh, uh, in preparing the salt uh, which is not potassium sodium ammonium in step one uh, we add the solid okay the solids iron 2 oxide in excess uh, it's very important for you to know that we must use excess iron 2 oxide uh, so that the sulfuric acid is completely reacted okay so we add iron 2 oxide in excess into this uh, sulfuric acid 0.5 mole per decimeter cube now since we use excess iron 2 oxide uh, again and then iron 2 oxide is insoluble therefore in the products uh, we still have this iron 2 oxide solid of iron 2 oxide in the solutions and we can remove this excess iron 2 oxide through filtrations okay so let's say this is the products so we pour these products into a uh, filter funnels that contains a filter papers so the solutions of the salt uh, the iron 2 sulfate uh, will pass through the filter papers okay and go to uh, go into this uh, beaker here okay. and then this excess iron 2 oxides will remain in the filter papers okay so excess reactant is in solid form it can be removed from the products through filtrations uh, so this is the products that we want uh, this is a pure salt solutions now after we get a pure salt solutions then 
Then we go through the process that we have discussed uh, in preparing the salt of potassium sodium ammonium. That is crystallization. Uh, because there is still a lot of water. So we want to remove the water. To remove the water, we heat the solutions until it is saturated. And then we let it cool down to form the crystal. So after we get the crystal, then uh, we do the filtrations again. Okay, So uh, we pour the solutions that contains the salt crystals uh, into the filter funnels and the filter papers and then uh, the salt uh, the crystals of the salt will remain on the filter paper so the remaining water is then removed through filtration uh, then the crystal is rinsed with a little distilled water and to dry it we press it with filter paper so you see a uh, step two and step three is the same uh, as uh, what we discussed in preparing the salt of potassium sodium and ammonium the difference is in step one and step two uh, so that is a step uh, in preparing the sort of uh, not potassium sodium and ammonium